the things that I'm going to tell you about today are horrendous, but the flip side of it is some of the things that, that the New World Order and the Illuminati know, if they were put to good use, would be fantastic. But if you, if you saw what I've seen, it would make you angry that these people are taking what could be used for the elevation of mankind and they're using it to enslave us. Evil men have already divided up the world into regions and they've got it all planned. They want to rule the world. Their goal is to reduce the population to a half billion with a few of them as the, right, you know, the, the elite get to rule the world. God has plans for the world and so does Satan. And Satan's plan is no people here, maybe just a few, and a one world government. The Bible says perilous times shall come. The people will be fierce, despisers of those that are good. Christians are going to be absolutely hated. strategy for America in this period when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity. It isn't a, a crisis. We know the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Do you not think an angel rides in the whirlwind and directs this storm? I do have one question. During the crisis or any time that you're aware of, uh, has the Federal Reserve or Treasury participated in any gold swaps arrangements? Uh, we don't. The Federal Reserve does not own any gold at all. We have not owned gold since 1934. Congress shall now vote for approval of H.R. 8791, the Homeland Terrorism Preparedness Bill. A said bill requests emergency response funding up to and including... Uh, I'm sorry, this section is classified. Which passages of scripture should guide our public policy? Should we go with uh, Leviticus, which uh, suggests slavery is okay? And that eating uh, shellfish is an abomination? Or we could go uh, with uh, Deuteronomy, which suggests stoning your child if he strays from the faith? Or should we just stick to the Sermon on the Mount? A passage that is so radical that it's doubtful that our own Defense Department would survive its application. told me, for what it's worth, that some of us will be able to have ascended abilities, I mean full-on ascended abilities, prior to the actual shift happening. So that would be very cool, because what we're expecting after 2012 is a 100 times more harmonious utopian world, where things like time travel, levitation, instant telepathy, instant healing, telekinesis are as common and as everyday as breathing. What is at stake is more in one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind. Peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. I want to tell you about a few of the things that I have learned during 
these last five years of intensive research. Perhaps the most startling thing that I can share with you is that all of the conspiracy theories that you've ever heard about one world government, about the UN takeover of the world, all of those conspiracies have now been laid to rest. There's nothing conspiratorial about it. It's all published. <laughs> the UN-funded Commission on Global Governance began meeting in 1992 in earnest and met for four years and last fall released their final report. It is entitled, Our Global Neighborhood. If the Bible is simply a book of myths, fairy tales, and stories, then it is disturbingly accurate in describing what we see unfolding in our current world climate. In my personal journey, I've come to the conclusion that the biblical worldview best explains the origin of evil and its many symptoms to mankind. It explains human suffering and the inescapable reality of death and decay that we experience in this world. But most importantly, it reveals why mankind has used deception as its most powerful and reliable instrument to carry out the plan set in motion by an ancient hate. Alex Jones, in his film Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement, summarizes the sacred mission of the global elite as, quote, to have a two-class system where the underclass are forced to live as slaves in tiny enclosed cities, while the elite enjoy the land of the earth, evolve into superhumans with the aid of implantable technologies, live eternal lives, and travel the cosmos. This is the promise given to the inner members of the New World Order and the agenda of the Bilderberger Group, end quote. This sacred mission of the world elite has been the primary motivation for the establishments of several layers upon layers of systems in this world. The following sectors are the major components of infiltration in this plan. They include the political, economic, military, scientific, educational, technological, and social facets with the spiritual ideologies being the main ingredient guiding this massive deception. Many of these facets overlap and build on each other. Using these various components of human society, the world elite are tirelessly working to allow the formation of a one world currency, massive depopulation, a one world religion, and of course, a one world government. With the speed at which things are changing and evolving, Never in human history has this plan been more attainable than today. But as I sorted through the many tentacles of this plan, I found that not only are we, the people of the world, victims, but the people who promote and continue to instigate the new world order and the promise of a new age are perhaps the most deceived and are the ultimate victims. The idea of what the ultimate goal for the new world order is something that bothered me a lot in my early and really a lot of my research for what the new world order was as I was learning things like, you know, the stuff in the food and the water and, and all the stuff that you learn, you know, the genocide and the, and, and the planned population reduction and the mind control and all the stuff that was going on. What did it all mean? What was it leading up to? The control grid, you know, the, the cameras and the one world government and the one world economy and, and all the stuff. What did it mean? Because the thing that got me is what, what happens if they get it? You know, what happens if they finally control everybody? It's a total lockdown, New World Order, 1984, Brave New World, whatever. It actually is that system. What then? You know, is everybody, is it all going to just end? And everybody sits back and they drink lemonade and say, hey, we did it, guys. Uh, but then the connection to, to Satanism is really what started to pique my interest early on and that they were theistic, you know, Satanists. They really did believe that Satan was God and they, they actively worshiped him and received instructions from the spirit world 
Uh, that was what tripped me out. And to see that network and, and every door that was kicked down, you know, investigate an investigation led to somewhere, some Satanistic connection. So uh, the, the answer to what the ultimate goal and the question of who or what do I believe is behind it is the same. That is the Antichrist. The, the system is being built around us, the control grid, the economy, everything is being built to force everyone to worship the Antichrist. That is what this is all about. That That's what makes everything make sense. It's the one component that makes everything make sense. And so what is behind it is a, a spiritual agenda, as it says in Ephesians 6.12, but it's also something that experientially that you can see in the research of the New World Order that they are attending rituals, they are receiving instruction from those rituals, and that, that instruction is to do the nuts and bolts things, to create the system, to do this, to, to do the, the poisoning or whatever, all the different conspiracies that are a part of that have some sort of mechanism or use in this future world government, world religion, world economy, which has one purpose, is to extract the worship of humanity for an ancient cherub. Tom Horn, in his book, Apollyon Rising 2012, stated, quote, Behind the scenes and beyond view of the world's uninitiated members, the alchemy and rituals of the occult masters, Illuminists, Masons, Bonesmans, Bilderbergers, and Bohemians, have combined to harmonize so completely within recent U.S. foreign and domestic policies as to clearly point to a terrifying civil conjecture, a near future horizon upon which a leader of indescribable brutality will appear. Although this false prince of peace will seem at first to hold unique answers to life's most challenging questions, ultimately he will make the combined depravities of Antiochus Epiphanes, Hitler, Stalin, and Genghis Khan look like child's play. So I really see what's gonna happen there is there's gonna be uh, some person who's just born as a man, he grows up, I believe he's going to be part of the secret societies, he's going to have tremendous influence and power and access to all kinds of high-tech stuff, and among that will be the process uh, known as recombinant DNA. And rec with recombinant DNA, you can actually open up a, a gene or a, a DNA strand, and you can insert a, a foreign gene into that. So I think that what's going to happen is he's going to take Satan's DNA, Satan's genetic code, and he's going to insert it into his own body. And then he is going to become a chimera. He's going to, be, going to become the beast by actually going through this transformation. The crazy thing is that we have the technology. We know that the sons of God came and did this back in the days of Noah. So we have a biblical precedence for this. And I think we're seeing these kinds of things happening already today. To understand the biblical worldview of the New World Order, we must first look at the fall of mankind as recorded in Genesis 3. This chapter reveals the origin of the plan, who's behind it, and where it's going. No other ancient text reveals so much about the nature of evil and its methods than the Bible and this is where it all begins. We all know the story. Adam and Eve were created by God in the Garden of Eden. God's creation was good, and mankind was very good. God had one commandment for Adam and Eve to follow. A serpent came and tempted Eve to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This is where it all begins. Prior to this point, mankind was not susceptible to death but Satan had other plans. The first lie ever recorded in human history comes from the mouth of Satan himself. Satan, being the father of lies, was able to redefine what good meant. Upholding to the traits of a great deception, Satan's lie contained some truth. But to understand how this lie has permeated throughout history and is being used to create the New World Order, we must break down this passage. Satan knew that when they ate of the fruit of this tree, that mankind would be subject to death. This lie is the foundation for New Age ideas like reincarnation. 
It is the idea that even though we may